Trying to figure out how much power Texas will need tomorrow, next week, next month, and next year is not easy. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, better known as ERCOT, manages the flow of electricity across the state's power grid. But exactly how do you ensure the lights turn on for 23 million Texas customers? ERCOT's role is to make sure that the, the power the consumption and the power generation is balanced on the grid. And we try to do that in such a way that we're using the uh, most efficient generation to provide, meet that load level. If it's a hot summer day, we may have all of the generation in ERCOT pretty much turned on and dispatching. On a cool spring morning, there may be only the absolute lowest cost generation that's online, and cost is based on what the individual generators bid into the market. Generally, they're basing that on their, their variable cost, and so that may be wind generation, which generally has no fuel cost, and so they're at, at uh, kind of however much the wind is blowing, that's how much the wind generators are going to produce. The nuclear plants have a very low fuel cost, and then the gas and coal plants that have to burn fuel are going to be based on whatever their fuel prices are. Not only does ERCOT have to manage 40,500 miles of transmission lines and more than 550 generation units, it also has to predict the future needs of its users. We have two, two basic kinds of forecasting. We have a long-term forecast and a short-term forecast. Long-term forecast is driven mainly based on weather variables, and, but it's also driven by economic growth because from now until next year and to 10 years from now, a lot of the growth is going to be driven by economic factors, the growth in the economy, more population, those kind of things. Um, in the near-term forecast, which we do for every hour of the next seven days, that's driven more by uh, really weather uh, more than anything else, as well as things like the day of the week, because you're going to have a different consumption pattern on a Monday and a Friday and certainly on the weekends. One quirk about the Texas grid, it operates almost entirely independently from those in other states. When it comes to upgrading and expansion, that unique status has some advantages. The main thing that makes Texas unique is that we're not connected except through some limited DC ties to the rest of the United States. We have uh, the, the eastern interconnection, which is basically the eastern uh, half of the United States, east of the Rockies, and the western interconnection, which are as everything west of the Rockies, ERCOT is kind of an electrical island. With this single state jurisdiction, Texas can make most of its decisions without input from other states or the federal government. That's particularly helpful when it comes to building more power lines, something Texas has spent billions of dollars doing in recent years, with much of that geared towards adding wind energy. Projects elsewhere, particularly those that stretch across state lines, have been slowed by a patchwork of regulations and conflicting interests. I think the, the common misconception is that it's easy to make it where anytime you turn on the light switch, the lights come on without fail. And, and in fact, it's a very complicated process. There are a large number of, of companies and organizations that are all geared toward making sure that that happens. And the process of communicating information and providing bids and selecting bids and the computer systems involved in all of that is really a, a very, it's, it's been said that it's the world's biggest machine. Managing the grid is all about long and short-term predictions about the state's growth, its weather, market conditions, and precisely when you might turn on your air conditioner. It's a lot more complicated than simply flipping a switch. Reporting in Taylor, Texas, this is Justin Dane for the Texas Tribune.